Hi, and welcome to our CSA Digital Email Summit. And our session for today is Implementing BME. My name is Maike, and I'm responsible for the marketing, especially the CSA Email Summit the last years, and of course, this year, the CSA Digital Email Summit. I know that we have a lot of participants who joined the last webinars, but the housekeeping rules for today. Please note that you're muted during the whole webinar. So if you have any questions, please submit them to organizer. I will collect all the questions and read them out loud at the end of the session. As I mentioned before, the session today is implementing BIMI and let me introduce our speakers for today. First of all, it's Florian Fierke. He's a senior manager delivery services at Map Digital and Peter, maybe you remember him. He was already our speaker on Monday. He's the head of the department email marketing at WIT. Um, yeah, I wish you a lot of fun. And um, I hand over now to Florian, um, who will start the presentation. Yes. Um, what about the questions? Should we do them? Yeah. In the beginning. First of we all, have prepared you have two to... questions. Yeah. Ah, I have to do that. You have to um, accept the presentation modus so that we can see your screen. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can I um, as that? Lorian mentioned, we have two polls today. We start them at the beginning, so just choose your answer. The first one you should see now. We'll wait a few seconds. That's the result, first of all, for the first question. Okay, and then we we'll start the second one. And we'll wait a few seconds again. And that's as well. Now it's your turn, Florian. You can start your presentation. Okay, cool. No, very um, interesting. First time I, I saw that. Can everybody see my screen, by the way? Uh, I think at the moment not. You have to accept it again. Ah, okay, sorry. I... Technically, <laughs> I have some difficulties sometimes. No? No, it's perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will turn my camera off uh, in a few seconds. First of all, thanks for um, um, inviting us to be a speaker. Um, I think I'm joining the CSA Summit for years now and um, it's always very interesting. And um, yeah, this time I hoped I, uh, I could see all of you in person, but unfortunately not the case. So probably I turn off my camera now so that you can focus on the on the presentation um, yeah so implementing BIMI um, yeah I saw that uh, um, some some of you already have implemented BIMI and at least uh, DMARC so it's nothing too new for you um, nevertheless I want to um, I want to take a few minutes to recap, really just a few. I don't want to um, bore you to death. Um, um, a, a few minutes of why we are doing that, um, or why why we are here actually. Yesterday, um, I received an email that someone um, want to give me 1.7 billion euro. And 
um, also sent me a picture and that's a husband and he died unfortunately and I mean um, it, that's very trustworthy I thought in the first um, first second um, if you <laughs> maybe you agree maybe not um, in the end that's that's a problem if that was the case probably I, I was uh, not here anymore <laughs> um, but in, in holidays or somewhere else um, but trust in the end is, is the big topic of communication. Um, I have an, another um, example. Uh, who do you trust more uh, or what, what would you prefer? This mail or probably something like that? Um, don't, um, don't think about too much about the, the company, but in the end, uh, why would you trust probably the second one more. It's because there's a seal on it. It's, it's a trust seal. So um, in the end, what we need is something like a trust seal for email. That's what we want. Something like uh, we, we can see for years in, in Twitter, the um, accounts from famous people always have a blue tick, a blue check mark, and then we know that's the official account. And the good news is, that there is something like that in email or at least some um, some companies try to establish that as a standard and that's what um, what's the idea behind BME. BME should be the trust seal for um, email and also boost marketing by presenting the logo um, and DMARC is the technical infrastructure that's being um, used for that ensure that. So um, if we recap the, the names, maybe all of you know the terms DMARC and BME, but not 100% what's behind that. That's why um, I thought I recap that um, for you. DMARC means domain-based method, message authentication, reporting and conformance. But what does that actually mean? When we send an email, the policy can um, can either approve the message, quarantine it, or reject it. Authentication. What does authentication mean? In the end, what we want is that the recipient knows that the email is from us and only from us, not from someone else um, also using the domain, just us. That's what authentication means. Reporting means, um, and that's a piece that was missing before as well, we would like to know what is being received from ISP site. How many emails that are arriving there with our domain name are authenticated correctly? Probably that's our mails. And how many are not authenticated, authenticated correctly? And that can have two reasons. Either someone else is trying to abuse us or it's our own mails not being authenticated correctly. And probably that's even more important to know that and fix it. And conformity means um, we would like to control a little bit what happens with email, what happens with our email being sent, um, whether they are correctly authenticated or not. We would like to decide on ISP side, on the receiver side, um, what happens. and in best case, um, it should happen the same everywhere. And now the same for BIMI. Brand indicators for message identification. As I mentioned, is a trust here. And we see two nice examples on the right side. What a brand is, uh, probably everybody knows about that. Um, the brand is, is your company. Um, the brand has a logo and you want to um, have it displayed. And um, the, the interest of the receivers at the ISP is to distinguish, first of all, um, private mail from business mail and um, company sent outs from private sent outs. And uh, yeah, the private persons can already have their own sender logo. It's usually the picture. Uh, of the person, the photo, and a brand would like to have the brand logo. And also on, on that end, you want to control which logo is being used. 
in the past some ISPs have just taken one from Google or <laughs> somewhere. Um, yeah, and last but not least, it's it's free. Um, it's it should become an open standard. That's the goal, and uh, we will speak about certificates later. That uh, will be the requirement for Gmail. But beside that, the pure technology is free. Speaking about the requirements, now um, we we know the um, uh, we we, are, we know what. Uh, DMARC means, or more or less, we, we hope we have an idea. Now we would like to start. Um, for DMARC, we have the requirement that the mail must authenticate correctly. We must prove our identity. That can be done via SPF or DCAM, and I won't explain that <laughs> again, um, or both, in best case, both. Um, why both? Because uh, for mailing lists, for example, um, mail forwardings, um, SPF will fail. So in that case, DCAM, it's a good idea to have DCAM as a fallback. And on the other end, uh, we can also have a broken DCAM process. And um, during that time, it's good to have a SPF as a fallback. So it's good to have both. And um, also very important, the, the sending domain must be aligned. That means that the from domain must be the same um, as the technical sending domain. I will explain that on the next slide. That's a technical requirement for DMARC that we can have trust. And BIMI requires that trust and it requires it on the brand domain, not just the subdomain, on the brand domain, the parent domain if you want. Um, we must have a DMARC policy. Um, and secondly, we also need good reputation, good enough reputation. And Gmail, as I mentioned, will require a certificate on top of that. And that's the action plan. First of all, we need to ensure domain alignment. That's step one. Then we can implement DMARC with a policy of non then checking reports that's an ongoing task in the end um, we need to check the reports and must be sure that all of our mail is authenticated correctly before we increase the policy and then step five is checking the reports again and in the end uh, that's also the outcome of the poll um, you need to do that regularly and as a last step you can implement BIMI. So before I hand over to Peter, last uh, slide that I will present you. <clears throat> what does domain alignment mean? First of all, um, you know that we have different do domains in our mail headers and the mail from, that is what you can see in your um, email client. That's all the friendly from. And this in the past, um, um, a lot of companies have chosen a different from than the actual techni technical domain, the envelope from domain. And the requirement that is called SPF alignment um, means that the envelope from must be equal to the mail from or at least the subdomain of that. And the same or the DCAM alignment, that's the second possibility to ensure alignment is that we sign DCAM over this domain. So either this domain must be equal to this one or this domain must be equal to this one or both. That's domain alignment. Now I'm handing over to Peter. So hello everyone. I'm trying to start my camera. So most of you or some of you might know me from Monday, so it's me again. So uh, I don't have to explain a little bit more because I think Michael already introduced uh, myself. Uh, I leave the camera on just for a simple uh, fun fact. It's because when I do, it means for Florian, push the button and let's go to the next slide. So we are at different locations. So if I make this here, it's not like a morning gymnastics or something like this. It's simply uh, changing the slide. 
So uh, now I, I take over with, with step two, which is, of course, it's the step where, the, let's say, the fun begins or the party begins. It's that you have to put on, on all your domains you, you own, you have to add this DMARC record with an underscore DMARC uh, regarding to every domain you have in the house. And, and, the, and, and the form that you have to do it, you can see it here, but basically it's, it's always the same. It doesn't matter on, on which or how many domains you put it. It's, it's the first, you always have to have the, the, the version number which is DMARC1 and, and, and uh, maybe one day there will be a different version but currently it's always the same and then uh, with P is the policy setting so with P you have to say how strict do you want to start with different settings like none, quarantine or reject but we'll go back to that later but at first and then step two you have to put in here none that's very important that you do not put anything else here but you start with none always I know there are brave ones out there who want to start with quarantine uh, from the from the first day starting, but don't do it. You will fail. So, and then that's what also is very important is if you have implemented this DMARC record, you have to put in an email address which is receiving the reports. A known issue, which is uh, let's say a very common one, is that if you implement DMARC, implement the settings correctly, but you forget to put in an email address, that makes a complete system. Uh, uh, completely not working. So please stay in mind that this that this format always you need to put in these mandatory mandatory fields. And before we hand over to the next slide, uh, I would just want to add some. It's something like step zero or step one point five is collect all your domains. It makes no sense to start implementing DMARC and starting with one domain if your company owns five hundred or six hundred. So if you want to implement DMARC, the first step uh, beforehand should be get a list of all your domains. And that is not your business main domain only. It is your type of domains, your special domains for special projects, the domains you once used to use and now are, let's say, uh, back to garbage. So every domain your company owns, put it on the list and put these settings to them. Because uh, if, you, if you're touching the admin tool anyway, then why don't copy the settings to all the domains you own? So that's very important. So once you 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 finish this step, it doesn't work. Let's try again. Ah, now it's working. It was a lag maybe. Uh, it's very important that you take a look at your monitoring tool. Uh, once the, the once you you enter the email address and the correct policy. All the information and of the provider feedback, uh, what is what is happening with your domain settings, what is happening with your records, what kind of what kind of guys out there are abusing or trying to abuse your domain, you will all see this in this report. And it's very important to get a first impression on on uh, does it look okay? Does it look quite green? Is everything fine and aligned? And is everything okay? Or do I have let's say uh, more more red than green? And then it's really time to hurry up. But uh, this phase, it's very important to take your time. Uh, it's, it's absolutely a, a, a common mistake to, let's say, try installing Bimi, uh, have it on none for one day, and then say, oh, let's, get, let's go to reject uh, right away. No, it's very important to take your time and monitor what's happening, and also to take some time into the analysis and see, hey, if I have some red ones, and you can see on the, on the example graph here, there are some red ones, take your time and analyze it. What? Because these red guys or these red uh, messages would be the one that gets blocked instantly when you go to reject, and there could be there could be some uh, some issues and uh, or problems if you just let's say block your your, uh, your your controlling software or something like this or any other internal report or, or something like this. So you have to put some time. And, uh, and and into analysis and and focus on the red ones and say hey what what error is coming here why why there is an error why something is not working take your time and invest it it's a very 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 important to not over hurry here and take your time for analysis and then <laughs> it's still a lag ah it's working once you've finished everything and and you and you say hey I have I had my I just make it one time this time, so don't click twice. <laughs> Very important. So, and, and once you you finish the monitoring and you feel safe about what your domains are telling you, you feel safe about, let's say, all the green world out there, not a lot red, or even if there are red ones, 
uh, that should be the bad guys that needs to be blocked then it's time to poke uh, to, to to put it on reject so then is where you let's say for example you 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 become cruel to the bad guys because then you tell every esp or isp receiving this email don't try don't accept this email and that's very important because on the good side is once you put the reject on there the most common post boxes will reject every other mail who is uh, not uh, following the policy or who is somebody who is abusing your domain but also take in mind that once uh, uh, you put on reject and you have not fixed your domain setup or you have not cleared and did, and, and did, did your homework and and they take for example if there were internal processes causing issues once you put it on reject these processes will explode like a bomb so that's very important that you only put it on reject if you're really really safe and in the best case you only see red ones which you really know that this is abusement and not internal processes internal settings and something like this but there will be there will be red settings on the in the non or monitoring phase which are internal processes uh, so for us for example we have like hundreds of domains there will be ones also in your company which will cause uh, issues and, and error messages because of internal processes so Putting on reject is great, but uh, even after putting on reject, right, it works better now. It works better. So uh, after putting on reject, it's very important, and uh, Florian mentioned it before. Keep monitoring. It's not on this when you finished it and say, "Hey, now I'm on reject, and now I never have to take a ca take, have care again of my domains." No, it's not. It's really not because uh, uh, there, there will be internal processes changing. There will be domains will be added to your system. Some domains will will change completely from ownership. You will gain new domains. You will leave some domains, and it's also very important to know what's going on with your brand. Uh, if you have multi brands, for example, which brand is very let's say interesting for the bad guys? What kind of attacks are happening, and how many attacks are happening, and which time frame? So it gives you really really important information. And also, it gives you information if there might be an internal process broken uh, after the monitoring phase or after the, let's say, non-setting non phase. So it's very important to constantly monitor these uh, settings and, and keep in mind that, that the wrong setting here, once you are on reject, can really cause some drama in your company. So that's very important that you keep an eye on it. Ta -da, there we are. So, and this was the basic. Like Florian said, uh, uh, if you want to have BIMI or implemented BIMI, BIMI, you cannot achieve and you cannot finish it without having DMARC in place. And once you have DMARC in place and have all the uh, steps we showed before in a perfect world and everything is working fine, then we go and, and go next step to the let's say BIMI process and. And don't even care about implementing BIMI if you haven't done your DMARC house, uh, houseware homework. That's uh, that'd be completely the wrong starting. So once you have all set up and all is finished, it's time to create a logo. And uh, the logo step, Florian will explain a little bit more detailed uh, after this slide. And what's very important is that the logo, once you created it, is put on the correct uh, correct space and on the correct HTTPS format. And, very, and also the best way would be if it's on the same domain as uh, which domain it's using for. So if you want a BIMI logo for, uh, for Bitweiden.de, for example, that's shown in the example, the logo has to be planned on the Bitweiden.de uh, uh, web space so that the logo fits to the domain it's used for. The second, uh, third step here is that you have to create a, T a TXT record. The TXT record is, is, is really, really in also in, always in the same format. It's default dot underscore bimi dot and then the domain you want to use it for. And also the form, like you see, it's very similar to the DMARC form that the record, like it's shown in the example, there is a version number and then there is a link to the image. So that's uh, basically really what it is. And yeah, 0.5, that's it. Yeah, really. And it's it sounds easier than it is because the the devil is always, is always in the detail and in this time the detail is yeah it's the logo and so i'm handing over to florian again okay thanks the logo yeah, okay. Thanks. thanks peter 
Yeah, the logo creation, that's a bit um, um, the, the tricky part. That's why I, I named it here, nerdy look to the logo creation process. Um, in fact, there's probably no single client ever having achieved that, um, at least from my side, to um, submit it 100%. Um, anyway, we um, if the, the problem is not that big, then um, I'm able to fix that or our team. Um, first of all, the logo must be in square dimensions and also without fixed pixel size. So it should be, it's a, it's a vector graphic format. And the, the difference to a pixel based format is that vectors can be scaled big or, or small and the quality is still perfect. So we are speaking with coordinates. Um, it's uh, SVG Im images are XML files. So in the end, we describe the image. We don't say each pixel is like this, like this, like this, yellow, blue, whatever. We describe the, the, the shapes of our logo. And the version, that's the tricky one, 1.2 1, 1 tiny PS. If you know the W3C um, check, you, there's a lot of checks for XML files and also for SVG files, but this version is missing. I sent them an email already if it wasn't possible to add this version. Um, I don't have a feedback yet. And uh, also for the converters, probably you have an, an image in a, in a PNG format or you know, Photoshop or whatever, um, and want to convert it into a SVG. There's options to do that, but the out Output file is not valid in most cases. Um, there is one possibility to, to check the file, and that's also mentioned on the official BIMI group page. Uh, you can install um, uh, um, Jingtrang, is, is this, um, this program called. I will show you on the next slide probably. Yeah. Uh, this one is a Python implementation, Pyjing. And uh, what this does is, in the end, it's a wrapper for, uh, for Java file to check against the RNC file. That's very technical. If you like technical de details, how this works, then um, you should go to the BIMI group page that's uh, described here in detail. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's tricky, but it's, it's, definitely feasible. What, what this uh, line here is doing is checking this logo, this SVG logo against this RNC file. You can download it on the page that's described here. And if the outcome is like that, that you don't see any error message, um, that means we don't have any mistakes in the logo anymore. Also on this page, you can see examples how this looked like if you still have a problem. And um, yeah, you you will um, uh, uh, you will be able to see the, the problems. For example, the version might be a problem. The generated files usually have a different version, or the base profile is missing, or we have IDs in there, or we have um, CSS uh, stuff um, in there that is not valid for this for this version or we have a missing title element, for example. So there's plenty of possibilities to fail with the logo. So far, Yahoo is very uh, nice to us and also accepts logos that are not 100% matching the standard. Uh, yeah, but we don't know if this will be the case forever. And we also don't know if other ISPs are joining, if all of them will be as kind as Yahoo. So definitely it's a good idea to check your logo and, and make sure that it's uh, looking as it should look like. A second good thing, and then I'm handing over to Peter again, is um, the mail kit inspector, BIMI inspector written by Jacob Alexa, probably most or some of you at least know him as well. And if your logo is failing, then you will see a lot of 
reasons why it's failing on this page as well. Please, Peter. Tell yeah, I us can, more. yeah I, just, I just want to add that there are a lot maybe attendees uh, also like myself. For me, Java is an island and Python is an animal. And for all these guys uh, who think the same like me or a technical understanding is like me, it's very important to use such sites like Mailkit, and Mailkit, Beamy Inspector, and that's very helpful just to see if your general settings are okay, if your domain admin, if you don't add the domain settings on your own, uh, to check if all in place, if there is any issue with this uh, domain setting or, or subdomain setting, that's very helpful to use these pages, and, and that's very important because not every one of us is a programmer, and so this uh, these tools and these check pages are really helpful for um, for checking the, the, whole, the whole setup process and see where is uh, the problem, where is an issue, and where do you need to, need to fix something, something like this. So I can't see you in case you're doing your gymnastics again. Yeah, I'm I'm just making it for you, Florian. It's just for you. So <laughs> I'm not seeing the camera. Sorry. No, it's very important. So once you finish, and I, I think we now talk a little bit about what you need to do, what you need to feel, how, what you need to amend, and all the, the, the work you need to put in, but it's very important to see also what this, uh, what's this work or why this work is worth doing it. Because as you can see, the branding, and this is a Yahoo example, is, is really an eye catcher. It's, a, it's basically a free brand impression and all the marketeers out there will just love it. And it's uh, also uh, it's also very important for the client out there to just show, hey, we do our business to protect you and to show you that we are the real brand. And uh, you can see the results here on mobile or just in the in the desktop version. You really see it, and it's really an eye catcher. And that's uh, that's why I would really uh, and that's why I, why personally, from brand perspective, uh, I'm, I'm longing for the day when Gmail rolls it out and all the other providers are following and just where the whole worldwide new standard is being that would be just just great your turn <laughs> thanks um, okay I, I also want to speak about one set truth um, I wouldn't call it showstopper but if you try to implement it on a private domain uh, like this one for me and uh, you expect your logo to be displayed correctly, it's not necessarily the case that it's happening because personal communication is not brand communication and Beamy is for brands. Um, that's why, um, so I, I did several mistakes here. First of all, sending domain is Florian ad and a brand is not a Florian and not a Mary. So stop pretending to be a person if you are in fact a brand, at least if you expect that your mail is being recognized as a brand mail and it will be recognized as a brand mail. Uh, but ISPs don't like that. Uh, so they can detect that easily. They see the mail volume. They also probably calculate a reputation for your domain. And in case of Google, they will require a certificate that you need to buy for a lot of money um, but in that case uh, I mean that's that's just the case don't be disappointed in case your logo is not being displayed it takes some time also in the beginning uh, if you're just sending low volumes or the reputation is not good enough um, yeah you need to make sure all of these points are fine before you see the results Google. We spoke about Google and um, I would like to speak a little bit more about Google as well. I mean, Google is not the only provider in the world, but probably the biggest one. And also probably, I mean, it's not because they are Google. Google is what Google is because they did what they did. They, they're doing good in, uh, in a lot of cases, not, not in all situations, but um, in the end, they also did a lot to push security stuff. Also like uh, DMARC and TLS, if they wouldn't require it that heavily, then I'm pretty sure um, the security standards in the internet would be much lower nowadays. Um, since they announced to join the Beamy party, it was in 
June, I think, this year or July, probably. Um, also, we as an ESP, I'm working at an ESP, we could see a lot of interest from clients in DMARC and Vimy. And some uh, just said uh, we would like to have it because uh, Google announced they will um, display it. So that's, of course, a marketing view, but also from a security standpoint, it definitely makes sense. And it's important, that's also what we see with AMP probably, that the big ISPs need to support standards to drive it. If they are not driving it, then the standards will die before becoming standards. Vimy is not a standard yet, but hopefully will become one. Um, there's also reasons that may might, might be showstoppers for for that, like um, local uh, programs providing similar um, benefits, like displaying the sender logo um, for for whitelisting purpose, or if you pay some money. And of course, they might not join Vimy as quickly if they are destroying their own business for that. Um, Yes, but that's that's another story. I think the idea for trust here for email in, in general is a good idea. Um, summary. Yeah. Just a, you want to speak? Ah, yeah, you wanted to speak. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, just my micro had a little bit. So now I think now it looks like I'm back again. So just to summarize a little bit. So DMARC, if you like Vimeo or not, it's definitely a good idea. It's even a good idea for domains. On domains, you never thought about branding and you will never brand. So even what Florian mentioned, like private domains, small domains, or just technical domains you use, it's basically useful on every domain in your whole company. And basically, there is no reason to not use DMARC on any domain. That's very important. You see if you're being abused and who is abusing you. You see your broken processes. You even have a better overview of what is sent and also about your complete domain structure. When we implemented Vimy and the monitoring tool or DMARC and the monitoring tool, we were more taking care about our complete domain settings and we were, let's say, uh, having the, the, the domain, all the complete domain stuff implemented more in our company DNA and that is very important. And what we see and that is, uh, that is a, a great proven fact is that that once we implemented DMARC and Vimy as a bonus, of course, uh, we saw that uh, the number of attacks or of abusement with our domain dr reduced dramatically. So you see all the bad guys, uh, well, you bore them. Usually they, are, they keep focusing on all the weak stuff. And for them, it's very easy to find out who is weak because all this uh, DMARC and, and SPF setting, it's a public information. You as a hacker or as a criminal, you can see if the domain is secured or not. And uh, it's same if you if you want to break into houses. If you could see and some houses were green marked, so it's easy to break in and some are red. So, hey, you better not try. You wouldn't focus on the ones which are which are which are which are hard to break in. So what we see is a, is a dramatical reduce of, of attacks and abusement. And I can just recommend every brand out there use DMARC on every domain you, you own. So now, without a movement, it's your turn. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, the the factor um, learning by pain is definitely there with DMARC. We saw we had some clients um, saying, "Ah, DMARC, probably it's not a topic for us now. We don't have time and interest to read reports and so on." Um, probably as soon as we have time, which means never. In other words, and um, then they had a massive attack, and then suddenly um, the priority increased a little bit. Um, yeah, that's happening. Um, for um, speaking about the Bimi logo, um, it's it's still a challenge somehow because it's technical. It's not that easy to create the logo, at least a valid one, to validate uh, your logo. Um, there's not really easy tools. Um, I, I, I mean, I think, or I guess in the future, we will have plenty of them very easily, but for the moment, it's still a bit tricky to do that, which is a showstopper for the broad mass, definitely. And um, regarding the, the uh, yeah, regarding Gmail, they started with a closed alpha test, closed group of clients. And uh, this is still running, 
and um, the only thing that we know so far is that they will require um, 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 a VMC a, um, a certificate, a trust certificate uh, for uh, um, before they display it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit different approach than Yahoo did it. Yahoo said based on the volume and the reputation, that's our trust indicator. And Gmail says, no, we need someone to prove that this is you uh, certificate. It's just a different, um, just a different approach. And on the Digi Cert web page, that's one trust certificate um, provider. I checked, double checked yesterday, and they still say logo verified email is coming soon. So it's quite still quite new. Um, one last word to the certificates. Um, there's some talks around um, the uh, that that we might need to pay per logo or per domain that is being certified, and that might be an interesting discussion because usually in Europe um, shops have uh, local domains for each country: Italy, France, Spain, Germany, and so on. So uh, it's it, brands have easily 20 domains for just one um, brand. And in the US, usually they use just the .com, which is then just one domain. And if the price for the certificate is critical, then this is definitely something we need to um, think about or they need to think about. Um, yeah, but again, there's no official information about certificates and pricing yet. Um, but this will be interesting for the future. Do I have one more slide? Yeah, it's email at CSA Summit 2018. <laughs> um, yeah. Just a little info, this has been made before COVID, so that's no misunderstanding here. <laughs> so I'm back yeah. again. And yeah, we have some questions. Um, I will start with them out loud. Which okay. monitoring do you use for this report? I think the question belongs to the um, to the part three, uh, yeah. step three. Dimension. We we use the Dimension tool for the yeah. for the reports. And for okay. us in Gruppe, we also use the Dimension tool currently. Okay. The next one. What's considered high volume? Good point. Um, uh, I, I don't have um, I don't have fixed numbers for that. Probably that would be a question for Marcel. I don't know if he mentioned something in his talks um, already. Uh, for me, volumes or um, higher volumes, relevant volumes, probably start with ten thousand mails per week, something like that. Or, or if you speak about a month, twenty, thirty thousand. So if you just send five hundred, I wouldn't consider this high volumes. That's pro but it's just um, just um, um, yeah, just just a number. It's just a guess. Okay, we um, yeah. the next one. We have seen where the Beamy logo vendors and web browsers for Yahoo, but not in the Yahoo Mail app. Have you seen this, and do you know why this happens? Um, yes, is this still the case? Would be a question back. Um, I have seen this. In the past, it's been a few weeks back, probably, and um, then I also contacted Yahoo, and they said it was a bug, and now it should be fixed. So, um, um, so for, I, I haven't seen it recently anymore. Yeah, I can say just from brand side. So, as we have all brands online with Bimi, that we had temporary like a bug or issue with something, but but basically, and in the last two or three weeks, there was absolutely nothing. It was working flawless. So, it looked like it was a temporary bug, something like this. But currently, we don't have any issues with any of our different brands, and we have like uh, more than ten brands, so all working fine. Okay. Um, the next one is for Peter. What was your biggest challenge from a brand perspe uh, perspective to enable Bimi, not DMAC? Well, it, it, for, for Bimi, it was it, basically the logo stuff. 
like like Florian said before, because you, at first on brand side you think, okay, we need a picture. That's very easy. Hello, web designer, can you please hand over a picture? There it is, load it up, and it's not working. So you need to keep it in really in this in the specifications. You need to test a little bit. You need to involve your or your web designers also and and have a close chat with them so that you know that all the all the requirements you need for this really special uh, SVG file that these are filled up. So at this point, when you have DMARC in place and all is perfectly, it's very good time to be a good friend with your personal web designer that knows uh, how this specification is, let's say, put into the real real world. But that's really the, the most critical part, just to, to find the person who is taking care and, and translating all these technical picture requirements into a real file, which personally, from my marketing perspective, you just have to forward to the to the perfect to the to the uh, right person. So that was really a challenge because I'm really not a picture guy and I'm not talented in in, in using all the the Photoshop stuff and so. So it's really handy at this kind of the process to have your web designer of your of your uh, of, of hard on your on your side. It's very very helpful. Maybe I, uh, even if the question was not for me, I can um, pr probably also share experiences. Um, uh, what uh, what is challenging besides the fact that some um, some tools don't generate good outcomes is uh, first of all the requirement is that you have a square logo, but the shape that you see in the tool is, is round, which means the edges are cut. And you need to um, understand that because otherwise part of your logo is missing. So that's one challenge. And the second one is some logos are just uh, the name of the company, which is probably long, but just just like this in, in high. And that's uh, not a good logo because the logo is displayed quite small. And um, you need to, to, uh, to check if it's possible to you to have something that is useful in in square format and looks um, more or less good, otherwise it's uh, it probably doesn't make sense to to add a logo like the fav icon in the browser. If if it's uh, if it's text, you can't read anything. More than two letters or maximum three is doesn't make sense usually. For us, just to add, we had a challenge on this type with one of our brands, which is called Your Look for Less. And if you just uh, if you just write it down, you look for less and imagine you have a small squared uh, picture. It simply is not working. So we just made a short form with a with with the capital letters, and then it worked fine. And, and that's but, but generally that is not a challenge. That's just for Beamy. It's for general mobile uh, yeah. mobile compatibility of websites and so on. So it's very important. All you brands out there which stick to logos showing great on desktops. No, take a look at mobile devices and how your brand is looking there. That's very important. Okay. Um, after implementing Beamy and it works correctly, what happens if I want to change the logo? How long would it take, for example, in Yahoo to update the image? Are there any cage, uh, cage timing? Um, you can replace the logo in DNS and um, uh, it's the the caching is the the normal um, DNS caching times. So it's 24 hours. So uh, it can can be the case that Yahoo is caching that longer, but I don't expect it longer than seven days. But don't know how they do it. When I when I updated logos, um, the only thing I can check is the DNS entry, and that's um, that's really fast. But it would be interesting if you have anything. To share. Yeah, but, I, but I can confirm, Florian, because we had some to do some amendments uh, and it never took longer than 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Will there be an uplift in inbox placements? Do we have any case study? Um, yeah. Uh, Yahoo shared numbers that the uplift is up to 10% in open rates. They that, That's numbers from their side and probably Peter you shared some numbers on Monday as well right? Yeah so I don't remember right now the exact numbers but we can see it's improving we can see that our customers like it a lot and what we can also see is since we implemented Bimi and of course DMAC which is going with it 
we never had a, a deliverability issue on Yahoo side ever since. So that is uh, definitely a, a, a good good step forward. Okay. Questions about DMARC DNS records. Is it enough to have one DMARC record to cover all subdomains? Yes. It's uh, the yeah. It's inherited, and if you put it on your um, your parent domain, the the main domain, then it covers all subdomains. Yeah. You just need to have an additional one if you want to have a different policy. But you can also specify it in the in the record. You can say the policy for my DMARC record is, for example, non, and on all subdomains we I want to have reject. That's possible. Okay. And first of all, the last questions. I know that we have some questions more. We will discuss them afterwards and um, send the answers. Um, the last one, is there any time taken to display the logo on the email after implementing all the configurations? Didn't get it. Can you repeat? Please repeat yeah. again. Oh, of course. Is there any time taken to display the logo on the email after implementing implementing sorry all the configuration so you mean once you have implemented everything correctly how long mm -hmm. does it take until it's displayed for the first time i think um, so yes okay well, for us i can share my experience for us it took like uh, 48 hours or something like this but maybe i think it was also the usual uh, dna uh, or dns uh, the delay but it yeah. was quite uh, quite soon, quite quick. I, I also think that the critical part here is the domain reputation. And if you start with a new domain from scratch, then it might take some time to build a reputation. But yeah, if you have used the domain already before, then you already have a reputation. And then uh, once the technical setup is done, then it's displayed quickly. Yeah, and just a thing for me from brand side, please do not think, hey, I have implemented Bimi, and now I can, let's say, uh, grab the old addresses from, uh, yeah, from from the last uh, World Cup in 1950. So no, it's if you just, uh, if you just, uh, you need to be very important, and you need to take care of your list hygiene, your your reputation, and so stuff. And and if it's not shown uh, because your reputation is is really worse then it's correctly that it's not shown. Then, so please keep always an eye on your rep, general reputation. And Vimy and DMARC is not a, a free ticket to ruin your reputation. No, that's not. So, yeah, I think that's it for today. As I mentioned, we have a lot more questions, but um, I will forward, that, forward them to Peter and Florian so they can answer it afterwards. Yeah. Um, many thanks to Florian and Peter for today's webinar. Um, I was very happy that you were also a virtual part of the CSA email summit this year, CSA digital email summit, and Peter, of course, you too on Monday and today too. Um, yeah, dear attendees, that was our last webinar for this year. I hope we were able to bring a little bit of our CSA email summit feeling to your home. We would be very happy if you evaluate the webinar afterwards. So fill out the web feedback form. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you again in 2021, digital or live. Just stay healthy and hopefully we see us soon. And yeah, thanks again, Peter and Florian. Thank thanks you. for having us. Thanks, out. thanks everyone out there for watching. Bye. Have a good <laughs> Bye. Christmas. Yeah, you yeah. too. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. All right.